Welcome to Shorty Supercoach and welcome to another player profile and welcome to another video with Shorty just driving down the coast. I went to Lawn today and uh, was planning on just doing a player profile or a couple of vids down the coast when I got a minute but ended up having a kick of the footy at the Lawn Footy Oval and uh, then I just got distracted exploring and um, just walking through random places in Fairhaven. So the long and the short of it was, I realised I had a family dinner to get to at six and uh, it's quarter past five, so I thought I should probably get a move on and I thought, look, I wanted to get some content out there and I thought, you know, hopefully you guys don't mind too much that the video quality is bumping around <laughs> bloody everywhere. It won't be an all too common thing, but I, I figure a little bit of content's better than no content and um, we'll bust this one out today. But. I wanted to talk about Stephen Cornelio and what he could potentially offer and he's a pretty unique player for at least this season. He's one of those midfield premiums that genuinely can average premium numbers but isn't priced like one and that makes him a very interesting proposition. And what made this happen was obviously last year he was injured very early in the game and I think it was a knee issue, and he scored zero, which was fantastic. I remember it well, because I had him. <laughs> I remember he came out with strapping on, and I thought, oh, it's not a good sign. I think he started forward, and I was like, this ain't good. And then I reckon within two or three minutes, the knee sort of buckled or popped or whatever, and he was done. So frustrating at the time, but now all of a sudden we see it make him represent a little bit of value. What does it do in the numbers? Like I said, I'm, I'm doing this on the drives. I don't have the notes in front of me, but I think his average last year was about 101. If you take away that zero, um, it's more like 108. So, you know, who knows in that match? He could have scored 150, which would have made his his average more like 110. He's good at, he could have scored 60 or 70 anyway, so his, his average might have been 105, 106. But... Nonetheless, this guy, fully fit, is minimum 105 average. And maximum, I think, he's about 110. And it's going to be really interesting to see. So, should you pick him? Now, at the moment, he is in my team. I've sort of wrestled with it a little bit. It probably hasn't seemed like it, because he's been in every one of my sides today. And to be fair, I, I have often minus him on my team but never replaced him and saved it so I've, I've played around with it you know he's been that little blank space in my side but I haven't yet changed him permanently I just would like to see how the Giants line up through pre-season and you know Ward will be back in there and, and just to see how it all goes I, I know Cornelio is a player that he can rest forward and do a bit of damage, but um, we want him going through the guts. And I think he's their best clearance player, to be honest. And what, I'll talk about it a little bit later, but the whole guns and how many in the one side and the one position. You know, we've seen Dame Beams, Penderbury and Swan back in the day, Ablett, Bartel, Corey. So I'll talk about that in a sec, but. A few pros and cons about Cornelio. His biggest pro is absolutely his ceiling. He can go big and and look when when there's a live kill, he takes it. He he sees a weak Gold Coast or a weak side and he'll have 33 touches, seven tackles, and kick a couple. And 164 points later, you're just licking your lips. But he also can put in some you know lower scores as well. And I also think he can sometimes, because he isn't always the best ball user, sometimes he can have a couple of clangers just because he is such an inside player. And sometimes um, that can result in 
good scores but not great scores like you know high 90s early hundreds I remember last year he had a run I think if you go back I think he scored 150 odd in the first round and then I reckon he scored like 104 102 106 102 I reckon he had a real run there and but then he'll sort of make up for that by having a 200 you know so overall package He's a very, very good super coach option. But he does sometimes, from a week-to-week proposition, can be frustrating. Or not frustrating, but a roller coaster type. Because he's not going to be your Scott Penderbury of years gone by, where he's 112, 127, 144, 108. You know, just reliable, good scores each week. Um, Cornelio will hit 80s, 90s. 180s, 150s. That's, that's how he rolls. So, um, and his body probably has let him down a touch at times. Obviously, we we mentioned the knee issue just before, um, but I do recall, if my memory serves me correct, he was rested forward for a long period of the game. At some stage, I something says soft tissue or. or was it an elbow or a hand injury? These are the sort of things that I'd research and look up before I'd normally do a vid, but you guys can clarify for me. I, I recall there being another niggle that he sort of had. Um, but overall, I do endorse him as a selection. As I often mention, you can't always start with Fife, McRae, Neil. You know, you, I mean, you can but you can't have those guys, Gorn and Grundy, Whitfield, somewhere over your side, you've got to find a little bit of value. Um, you just can't have every big gun. You've got to skip on some and look to upgrade to them at some stage throughout the season. And it can be really handy to just find an extra, in theory, 50 or 60K, because I think Cornelio is unders price-wise. And if you can do that with a couple of players, then all of a sudden it might save you 150 to 200k in theory, um, which can really help elsewhere. So I think the fact that Cornelio, within his own rights, if he was priced at a probably a normal price for him, say 107 average or something like that, you might think about him anyway. But the fact that he is a little bit unders because of that zero, and he's the captain now as well, and he, he does strike me as the type that will relish that opportunity and step up to the plate. So I think it makes his selection a little juicier with, with that upside there. Um, and like I said, I wanted to touch on um, sort of the discussion of... I hate the term, but points stealing. I'm not a believer in it. People talk about like Brownlow votes and how they steal off each other. I'm never a big believer in that because I think they make each other better and players make each other better. Good players and good sides help other players score well. Um, but there's there has to be a point. And I just look at the Giants and Ward will come back. He's not going to average enormous, but he, he'll be back. You got Whitfield, you got Kelly, you got Cornelio, you got Taranto, you got Hopper. I mean, that's five. That's five blokes that could genuinely average a hundred plus. Um, and we have seen in the past, like I mentioned, the Collingwood Trio, the Geelong Stars of years gone by. Um, we've seen, you know, we're going back now, but Judd, Kerr, Cousins, even I think Braun used to average reasonably well going back now but the long and the short of it it can be done and I wouldn't say you know I wouldn't say it should stop you selecting guys because you think points might get stolen I heard a good quote from the fellas at Jock Reynolds um, good players steal points off bad players they don't steal points off other good players and and I think that's a, a pretty reasonable point my only thing would be that if a tagger is assigned to the Giants, then you're probably going to cop it, you know. 
if you're say last year with the cats I think say you only had Dangerfield and you were like let's hope Kelly gets the tag so Danger gets off the leash you know if if I've got Whitfield, Kelly and Cornelio and so and so coach decides to tag then you're going to cop a tag and let's hope they work through it but you're going to hit it where alternatively if I just had Whitfield and Cornelio or, or maybe just Whitfield then you're like come on don't tag Whitfield tag Kelly I don't care you know and all of a sudden Whitfield doesn't get any attention runs rampant meanwhile Kelly's had a shocker day you know he's been dealing with the tagger all day and he scores 72 so that is one thing but I, again the big picture the overall we have seen many cases a bit like the dogs last year you know what uh McRae averaged 128, was it? Uh, Dunkley 115 after a poor six or seven first few rounds. And Bontempelli 114. I think that's about right. So it it can be done. Giants do bat super deep. They've got to have five in there that could legitimately pose a threat of 105 plus. But at the moment, I've got Kelly, Whitfield and Cornelio, and I'm pretty comfortable with that. So... Yeah, um, let me know what you think. Let me know what you reckon of Cornelio. I'm just cruising through Anglesey right now, so yeah, we should make dinner. I might have to do my hair a little bit, but uh, we should be right. Um, but yeah, let me know what you reckon about Cogs, and I'll be back with another play profile pretty soon. Cheers.